let me just say, uh, I've been coming to Midnight Golf for years. And it's always a pleasure to come over here. And one of my passions is I can be, you know, Dave knows pretty much all across the U.S. and locally and nationally. I have a very impressive track record. But my passion is making sure our young people are financially educated. Today we're talking about credit. But the thing is, regardless of what you go to college for, regardless of whatever you do in life, in this country you have to be financially educated. You may be the bomb in calculus, chemistry, and what have you, but the bottom line is you want to make sure you're financially educated, and it's never ending. Some of you may have heard examples about credit reports. Now, when you get in college, what you want to do is take a personal finance class. Because I've had the opportunity to counsel doctors, lawyers, professional athletes, entertainers, and the first thing they would say is, Kevin, I just wasn't financially educated. Because when you're doing well, you're going to have a bunch of friends and potential investment opportunities. And when you turn 18, you sign a contracts and lease agreements. It's a game changer. So in high school, you can sign something. You can say, oops, my bad. But when you turn 18, it's legally binding. And one thing, I have a lot of different experiences in my background, but one of the areas I used to be a special finance manager at a Dodge dealership. So when people would come and get cars, um, they would walk in and walk in saying, What's my payment? I want my payment to be no more than four fifty a month. No, we're going to learn tonight. When you walk in, the first thing come out of your mouth is, what are your interest rates? See? Regardless of your credit. Because the thing is, money brings out the worst of some people. So what happens is, we will see people walk away, and they will be, the guys would joke and laugh at them. And say, okay, if I just charge them 18%. I said, man, why do you do that person like that? They got good credit. Well, you know, I got to make my money. So here, I got to move on because there's so many things I want to convey to you. But here's the last point. If you want to get from here to the next level, you're going to get there. But if you want to get to the next level, you've got to be financially educated. And it's never ending. And I tell young people sometimes, well, when you talk about money and talking about credit, uh, it's a little boring. I'm like, no, really? Because it's going to put you in a position to do so many different things. Now, when you look up here, if you want to take some notes, I highly, you know, recommend it if you want to take some notes, okay? I highly recommend it. And here is one of my favorite equations. If you learn how to budget, save, invest, and have great credit, that's the equation. But here I have attitude, and that's why I've been having the right financial attitude, because sometimes people, people can be very casual about their bills. And we all know personally, you have some people that they'll tell you, well, you know, I know I have a little attitude, and that's just me, and that's just how I am. I say, well, yeah, but when it comes to money, you don't want to make no money. Because you got to have the right mindset and how you conduct yourself at Midnight Golf, always have outstanding students. But when I say financial attitude, I mean that you got to take your personal credit history and your overall financial health and your financial future very, very seriously. Very, very seriously. So I say budget. So I kind of shorten a little bit. I always say budget, save. I have a little song. Budget, save, invest, and have great credit. Budget, save, invest, and have great credit. That's your ticket. You keep those variables up there, and you take them seriously, you're going to be okay. Because young people know how to do one thing with money. And that's spending. Spend, 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 spend. Spin, spin, spin. But we have to have the financial discipline to say, when I get paid, I have to direct deposit. There's no way in the world I go and work 40 hours a week. As soon as I get paid, like I told my niece, you run it straight to the mall. No, what you do is, for those of us who go to church, and time is very, very important, but for this discussion, you do what? You always take your money off the top. Okay, you got direct deposit, you got automatically got 50, 100, 200, you got something going into your savings account. You don't get paid and run straight to the mall. So most people have to strip flip. They get paid, they go shopping, they chill, and then bills, and hopefully something left over. No, you can't do it like that. You got to, when I get paid, I pay me first. I take my money off the top, and then I pay my bills, and then I go chill and do something. That's very, very important. Now, one more thing here, I'm going to give you an example. You see this one right here? We're going to move on to credit. I have to give this. You see here, track your expenses. This is a great idea. For the next two months, get you a little notepad. And every time you spend some money, write it down to the last penny. Then that way you can learn what? Your spending patterns. I'm going to give you a good example. If you're in school and you're spending five, listen up everybody. You're spending five bucks a day in the vending machine. Five bucks a day. 
That's five times five, that's 25 bucks a week. Times four, that's 100 bucks a month. In one year, that's 1,200 bucks a year in hot Cheetos and honey buns. Five bucks a day, five days a week, in the vending machine. 25 bucks a week, in one month, that's 100 bucks a month, times 12, that's 1,200 bucks a year spending frivolously. So for me, I don't carry money on me. I think I got 50 cents in my pocket. Because it's in my pocket, I'm going to do what? I'm going to spend it. So here, you can say, you know, because whatever you're doing now, and you see Midnight Golf, you all are good students. You got good spend, you got good study habits. And as you carry over to college, you're going to be okay. But when it comes to money, you can be in a routine and have a habit of when I get it, I spend it. Well, I gave you 100 bucks, Keisha, where that money go? Well, we went to the movies. Um, I gave Karen 10 for gas. Uh, we got them hot and ready. And then, um, oh, Friday after school, you know, we went and got, now you're trying to figure out where your money went. You can't roll like that. Now I've seen some of the brightest people not be financially educated. Now one more, we're going to move on. Run your personal life like a business. You want to start practicing now. So I always say, the big thing about midnight off, you got to be coachable. See? And most people want to play the game, but you got to come to practice. See, this is practice. So we say is, run your personal life like a business. You always know what's coming in, and you always know what's going out to the last penny. And one last thing, I'm going to give you a new goal, a financial goal. My financial goal is, by time 25, I want to be in this position here. I want to make my first million. I want to make my first five million. Whatever it is, now not just academic and career goals, now start incorporating financial goals. Okay? Let's keep moving. Now, you all know what credit is, but I'll give one example, and then we're going to keep it moving. Can somebody give me a general idea of what is a credit report? Huh? Somebody give me an example. Who raised their hand first? Back here? Oh, anybody? Come on, now, this is midnight loss. Come on now, y'all. We've got to loosen up a little. I'm going to be a little serious. I'm going to be a little humorous too now, so come on now. Okay, right here. All the money that you spent on something? Well, it's going to show a track record of what you spent. Anybody else? Right here. It's going to show if you... Uh, Paid on time or not. If you paid on time, wonderful, right here. Okay, tracks, that's wonderful. So check it out. Just look at this. From kindergarten through your senior year, you got your academic transcripts, right? Everybody in here got transcripts, and you've been tracked since kindergarten. So when you turn 18, you're going to have a new tracking system. It's going to be a financial transcript. And that financial transcript is going to be what? Your credit report. And you all know how important your transcripts are. You may want to apply to a school. We don't know you. So what do we need to see if you are a potential candidate? I want to see your transcripts. You might come there smiling and be nice, but I want to see your transcripts. So now when you turn 18, the financial transcript is going to be what? Your credit report. Now let's move over to credit score. Can somebody give me an idea of a credit score right here? Well, this is, okay, that's my, I have a few students in here. She said your financial GPA, and you all know this is a midnight golf. You, re you realize how important your grades are. So now you will have a new GPA, a financial GPA. And that financial GPA is going to be what? Your credit score. And you can't get too much deeper than that. A financial GPA and your financial transcripts. Because here, as Dave mentioned before, your credit is going to, and the one thing about this is that it's not a question of if you're going to be impacted. So some people say, well, you know, I'm not really into that credit, you know, it doesn't really apply to me. And we're going to see this in a second. That's not true. Every single last person in here will be impacted by credit. And the beautiful thing is, if it's positive, it opens up doors. And in America, it's called using other people's money. You can learn how to leverage your money and leverage your assets. We don't advocate getting into debt, but that's a way you can use other people's money strategically, okay? So we see here, if you buy a house, you know, you get an apartment, you, you get a car. And in Michigan, it's not like Alabama where you can drive with no insurance and blue smoke and the tailpipe can be hanging off. In Michigan, you've got to have insurance. So now, companies are doing what? They're using credit scoring models to determine how much is your insurance premium for your vehicle. Now, the big one that Dave mentioned is employment. Because it happened to me. I went to the University of Alabama, Birmingham. One of the best schools in Alabama. Came home, applied for a job at the bank. I'm like, yo, this, this degree stuff paid off. 
I go to the interview, I'm sharp, I'm ready to rock and roll, I'm ready to compete. And when I walk in, they say, wow, you blew us away, Kevin. We're going to bring you back for a second interview. Two weeks later, no one called. I'm like, okay. So I called him and said, like, yo, uh, I mean, sir, excuse me, are you going to send me, uh, bring me in for an interview? He said, well, we'll send you something in the mail. I'm like, send me something in the mail? When I got the letter, it said, due to the information contained in your consumer credit report, you cannot get the job. So when Dave said it, it's crucial. They can use your credit reports. If you were real casual with it, and like, well, okay, you know, I'll get back with it, yeah, I'll do it later. It's not a question of if, it's going to come back up. And that's when it gets your attention. And here, when you get your apartment, utility bills, first thing they're going to say is DTE, what's your social security number? Well, what do you, need that, what do you need that for? And make sure you don't have any bills in your name, and see if your deposit is going to be zero, 100, 250, or 300 bucks to turn on your heat. So it's very, very critical. Now, here, I'm going to show, I got a book for you, which is really, really good. Can you have me one of those books? You know, I haven't forgot about you. I got you a wonderful book. So some of the stuff you're going to get, but I want to plant the seed before I get to this book. So all of you are going to get a book. If, if I run out, I'm going to give you my number, and I'll make sure you get one. I won't forget about you. I'm going to leave my number, like I always do. I'm good people. I'm the kind of guy you want to keep in touch with because it's all about knowing people, right? And networking, right? Yes. Okay, now, let's keep going. Okay, so here's an example of a credit report. So I love this, you know, it's a little humorous. You know, I call him Gold Digger Jackson. You know, he lives on Kanye West in Detroit. You know, it's like, okay, you got it going on. Okay, then up here, you like that, right? Kanye West, and me go go Digger Boulevard, okay, whatever, right? So here, we know what this means, right? SS, right? So, and we see DOB means what? So you remember when I said, I'm not really into that credit stuff. I, that, that credit stuff, man, it's a little boring. If you have a social security number and a date of birth, you don't have a choice. Okay? You will be tracked. But if you do it the right way, take your business, you can drive somewhere and say, can you give me that, that, that uh, charger, the SRT, with the piped out seats, with the moon roof, with the heated and cool seats, and um, I want the big tires on there. That's for the winter. I'm going over here and give me a range. I want it loaded. So they're going somewhere and saying, you can drive that, that purple car right there with 90,000 miles. <laughs> or you can drive that Jaguar and pay 21% interest. There's people out here, doctors and lawyers, driving Mercedes and Jaguars, paying 22% interest. And you would never know. But I know because I've worked in the industry. So here, let me get deep and then we're going to get to the book. Let me show you how detailed it is. Right here, public record. It'll tell you if you've been sued, filed bankruptcy, only taxes, installments, you got a personal loan, student loan. Right here, it'll tell you a car loan, real estate, how much you own your house, REV balance, what you own your credit cards. If you pass due, what's your monthly payment on your bills? What's your monthly payment on your home? If you maxed out your credit cards, who pulled your credit report? Who pulled in the last six months? How many accounts you got? How many paid accounts you got? How many good accounts you got? How many bad accounts you got? How many bad accounts you had a while ago? How long you been in the system? Right? They can tell me how many bad accounts you had a while ago, like old trade line. And then it'll tell me how long you've been in the system, then your financial GPA. You see how detailed it is? Right. And it can be the difference of, and I'll talk about it a little later, as an example, your house costs 300000 No, I'll give you three fifty. Your house three hundred and fifty thousand. You got a swimming pool, jacuzzi, sauna. I mean you have it going on, which I know you're gonna have it going on anyway. And your cousin's house costs one fifty. Your interest rate is three point two percent. Your cousin's is twelve point seven five. Your monthly payment is cheaper than your cousin's. Did y'all hear that? Right, your house twice as big. And that could be because of what? Because of your credit. See here? Now, we're going to show you this. We're going to keep moving. So here, let me show you like the second page. Cross Country Bank. REV, that tells me it's a credit card. Here, when it opened, the balance from the last time it paid, if it's past due, what's the account condition? It says charge off, what's the status? Is delinquent 90? So that person hadn't made a payment in three months. They in college. Man, it's spring break. You know what? That credit card bill, I'm about to get back with it next month. Oh, uh, man, you know it's homecoming. You know what? I'll get with him next month. Third month. Well, I got to keep my phone on and get me some food so I can talk to my mom and my grandmother now. Now you're three months behind, but guess what? They tracked it. See? So when you, the, the key thing, you can't skip a month. 
Because they're going to do what? Well, I ain't going to worry about it. You know, I just don't have it and they will get it when they get it. Okay. But they're going to track it. It's going to do what? It's going to adversely affect your what? Your financial GPA is going to do what? It's going to come down. And when you make a move, that's when it's going to show. So here, this person was in school and said, well, you know, I can't worry about it. I can't make these payments. So, okay, they think it's over. No, it's not over because they charged it off. And then what? A bill collection company came and bought it. National collection, original creditor, cross country. It's the same amount. But guess what? If they find out what a person works at, they can sue them and garnish their wages. Anybody heard of that? A garnishment. They can take money out your check every two weeks. There's nothing you can do about it. If they get a little deeper, they can sue you and take your state income tax. They can put a lien on your house. So it's a game changer. So this is something you take very, very seriously. You're going to be okay. I got one more. 319 Verizon Wireless. Person switched to Sprint. Cancellation fee. I ain't paying that cancellation fee. Cancellation fee. I got Sprint now. Well, just send them 20, 30 bucks. I ain't paying <coughs> Verizon. Nothing. I can't stand them anyway. That's why I switched to Sprint. After about six months, it's going to turn into what? A collection account. And one last thing, when you're in college, you have a roommate, and utility bill is in your name, and you move, make sure you call the utility company and take it out of your name. Please leave it in my name. It's cold outside. Girl, you know how I pay you. Oh, come on home. Wait, man, look out for it, brother, man. It's kind of cold. Just switch it over, man, a couple months, and I got you covered. Three months later, it's $2,000. Okay? Did you pay it? Yeah, man, I paid it. And you get a collection of it in the mail. And then you end up where? On your credit report. So if you, get, if you, if you move and, and DT, I mean, direct TV is in your name, take it out of my name. Friend or no friend, because it can end up where? On your credit report. Be very, very careful in college. Okay? So here, this, this is a person who got a really great credit. We've got to move on. We talked about financial GPA, your credit score. The key thing here is the cost of borrowing. So let me show you a sheet. Here it is. Where you go, they're going to judge you. A plus, A, B, C. D, E. You go from zero to possibly a C when you're young. They give you the benefit of the doubt. They don't just put you at an A. You've got to earn your way. So when you have zero credit as a young person between 18 and 20, then what do you do is you start to establish. And remember this when you're talking to your parents. We're not advocating going and getting into debt. We're advocating learn how to do what? Establish credit. Just remember that. i got to learn how to establish my credit. And that book is going to give you some tips on that. We're not saying go and get into debt, but learn how to establish. Okay? That's very, very important. So the goal is, is to make sure you get where? And you all know about interest rates. The higher the rate, the more you up. You go back. Right? So here, you want to go from an E to a D to a C to a B to an A. You don't stop here. Well, I'm a 727. I'm in good shape. I have A credit. If you want to bought a house and you were 727, and you waited until you got to a 730, that could be a 0 0.50 difference in your interest rate. And most mortgages are what? 30 years. Look how much money you're saving in interest. See? That's very, very important. Okay? You don't want to forget that. So here, we're going to get to the book. If you have a credit score, interest rate, auto loan, five-year history, you have A+. Plus. 25,000, the rate is 4.25%. If a score comes down, the rate does what? It goes up, see? If a score keeps coming down, the rate keeps doing what? And the payment goes up, and in Michigan, the maximum interest rate is 25%. So you gotta be very, very careful. Now, let's get these books. We have any questions before I go any further? Any, oh, real quick, we're gonna discuss this. Go ahead and get them their books. So now we're going to talk about, just briefly, as far as credit cards. The first thing we want to make sure we understand is not free money. My niece got her first credit card, and what did she do? She went straight to Somerset. As soon as she got it. Oh, Uncle Kevin, I'm so sorry. They just had these Gucci boots I just really wanted to get. And I got on her about it. So it's not free money. Avoid while you're in college. Only open one if you can afford one, because we got some... Males and females in here, we have some shoppers in here. And ain't nothing wrong with looking good, but make sure you have it in perspective. Because the credit cards are so easy to get. And when you're in school, you can be like, swipe, you can be like, swipe. Oh, I like them shoes. Swipe. You gotta be very, very careful because you gotta, I mean, for me, it's you know like really end up paying so much more back. And you don't want to be graduating from college paying student loans, and then paying what? Credit card debt. 
You didn't go to school for five years to go back and pay credit card people, right? I want the, I want the college to give me a good job, give me a house, raise me a family, get me a business, okay? You get a business, they may pull your credit, not if, they will pull your credit. So I don't want to be graduating and paying student loans and credit card debt. That extra money, I could be doing what? Investing it. See, you could be investing that money, okay? So it's only for emergencies. When you're traveling into what? Establish credit. If you learn the proper use, then you're okay. Emergencies and when I'm traveling and to do what? Establish. And then we're okay. We good? Okay, we good? Okay, now when you get your book, we're just going to go to Save Me a Books, uh, Skylar. So, so far so good? Any other questions? No. <coughs> need one book? She needs one back there, Skylar. So I'll probably, uh, a couple people have to share and then see me afterwards. I'll get a count and I'll make sure that you get your book, okay? So, the wonderful thing here is, is that now you have a book, okay? Let me get over here. Okay, let me see here. We have a little, a little, uh, okay, here we go. You know, you might have to click it for me. Just click this um, right there. Okay, we're in good shape. Sorry about that. So here's a Wild Wise program. So this used to be General Motors. Listen up. This used to be General Motors Acceptance Corporation. Now it's called Allied Bank. They're one of my corporate partners. But they sponsor me to come out and do this particular program. Okay, so I think it's wonderful because I can make sure young folks in our community can get these books. And I'm going to tell you right now, you don't have to read that book tonight or tomorrow. But before you go to college, go up to college, read it once. When you get in college, read it one more time and say, Mr. Butts, by the time I'm 20, I want to know pretty much 95% in this book. And then you'll be okay. Okay? And I'll, you're not going to do it. I always joke and tell people, if you don't want my book, just leave it here. But it, it never happens at big like, oh, but I always say that, right? So here, it's going to talk about the importance of good credit, the types of credit. We'll talk about that, credit cards, credit reporting. See, the reason why I gave that background is I wanted to plant the seeds. So when you get the book, you can be like, oh, okay, I remember some of that. And he was talking about doing a presentation. So now when you go through the book, you will have a little bit more insight, and you see the terminology, it will kind of make sense to you, okay? And here, you're going to get to a point where you have to learn things like charge-off, collateral, APR, periodic rate, annual fee, grace period, finance charges, credit reporting agencies, credit scores, credit report, liens. So you have to, you'll know these terms as you go through life because you're going to, you're going to see them. It's just inevitable, right? And then here, now we see the dual meaning of credit. What can it affect? Now when you go through the book, you know that it can affect my employment, where I live, my interest rates, and it can be a convenience or an inconvenience. So now when you go through the book, you can start to learn. The next level would be I can learn about short-term credit. Did you all know that DTE is on your credit report now? You may skip with Comcast or DirecTV or Consumer Energy, but you can't skip with we can't skip with DTE because it's on your credit report if you miss. Okay? And here we'll learn about installment credit. So one day you see installment, it has this I right here. So you'll learn one day the credit report. Whenever you see an I, that means installment. Whenever you see an R somewhere, that's a revolving. See, it gets deeper. I can only give you the basics now. But that R means revolvers. That tells me either it's going to be a credit card, a line of credit, or a home equity line of credit. When I see an I, it's going to be a personal loan, a student loan, or a car loan. Okay? Now, when we go here, the credit cards in the book, I want you to go through that. It's got terminology in there. And that way you can become familiar with what's going on because you're going to be getting a lot of offers when you go off to college. They're going to bombard you with it. Hoping one day you open them and sign up. Okay? If, you can't, if you're not working, you don't need one. Oh, I'm going to give you a good tip. This is a wonderful tip. 
When you get home, ask mom, grandma, auntie, if they have a credit card in their name, and to put you on their card, and they, I ain't giving you no credit card. Say, auntie, just don't give me the card. I just want to get established. Is that smooth? Did, did y'all catch that? But it got to be somebody that got some pretty good credit card, right? You're paying the bills, right? So you say, what you do is, give me a card in my name, but then you keep it. I just want to get established. And then my sophomore year in college, then you send it to me. Then after a couple of years, they may say, we'll convert and let you have one. Because I'm going to show you the credit score model. I want you to learn that, but not right there. So that's a little tip. Say, and they will be blown away. I don't want to use it. Just put it in my name and you keep it. Well, why is that? Because I want to get established. Now, that's strategic right there. Right? Okay, so here, got the credit information. They're going to tell you about grace periods and finance charts. So when you get those cards, you will learn between variable and fixed interest rates. Okay, we're always going to fixed interest rate. We've got to keep going. We're going to wrap it up in a minute. So now we're talking about the credit report and how you obtain the credit report. And to determine whether you can be approved, a credit check must... A creditor must check your credit report. Okay, we talked about what is a credit report. Now, here, the big three. I can safely tell you, you would know these three names like your ABCs by the time you're 25. Okay, that's how deep it is. By the time you're 25, you would know these three names like your ABCs. Uh, in addition to, they have tutorial and education links that you can go to and learn more. So the financial literacy is never ending. You're always learning because the world revolves around economics and business. That's just how America is. And those who are financially educated can do what? Maneuver and make moves. When you're financially educated, you can maneuver and make moves. You can't make moves without it because if not, you're going to get tricked or you're going to be indecisive or you're going to make some potential mistakes. Okay, we want to limit those mistakes. Now here's another credit report, right? We, now we see public records, collections, trade lines, inquiries. You learn about that. And then here, I want to show you this. And I kind of went over this. It shows you what's in your credit report, your employment information and stuff like that. That's in your book. But right here, what I want to show you is where it is. Here. This website right here. Turn to page. I need everybody to turn to page. And we're going to wrap it up in a couple of minutes. Turn to page seven. Okay, you see page seven? Yeah. I need you to circle annualcreditreport.com. You can circle that. So when you turn 18, I need you to go to that site, annualcreditreport.com. Because listen up, one of my students, she was in one of my classes maybe four years ago, and I told her when she got 18, this is, this is crucial. I told her when she was 18 to go to that site and get her credit report. And she was looking around and daydreaming. Her sophomore year in college, she went to uh, get an apartment. She had a really good job, and she could walk to work. And the apartment complex did what? They pulled her credit report. And her credit report was what? A DTE bill and a cable bill, and she couldn't get the apartment. You're not going to do it, but you can play around and wait until you're 23, 24, and pull your credit report, and something might, you might be really trying to make a move. So this is part of your future plan. By the time I'm 19, I go to this website and see if I can get my report. If it's blank, I'm in good shape. Okay? But here, we don't go that like free credit report. We don't go there. Okay? I'm going to let you know now where you need to go. You know, we need to go to annualcreditreport.com. Everybody say it again. What is it? Annual That's what I'm talking about. Now, now, now we... Uh, now, let's see, here you get a free one every 12 months. Okay, I'm almost finished. Now, here's the thing too. When you flip over to page, the next page on page 8, when they mentioned that if you pull your credit report, listen up, okay, focus in, let's focus in, focus in. Now, here is the place you want to always be aware of, the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. I don't want someone in here having some mistakes on their credit report and they don't, they don't know what to do and where to go. You always rely on what? The Federal Trade Commission. It'll give you a step-by-step -step process of what to do. So now you have the information. If anything comes up, I know I can go to the FTC, I can print a fraud affidavit, I can learn about identity theft, so if anything ever comes up, because the bottom line is you want to be able to what? Make an informed decision and know where to go. 
It's not a good feeling not knowing where to go. So now you know and you have the book. This is a beautiful thing. Okay? And here, two more slides and we're going to quit. On page nine, by the time you are 21, 22, I want you to learn about this model. Okay? This is the math model, the mathematical model that determines your score. So 35% is how you pay people. 30% is how you manage your debt, how you manage your credit cards, are you maxing them out? 15% is what? A length of history, how long you've been in the system. So remember what I say, the quicker you get in the system, the better. The quicker you establish, the better. So it's telling you right here, 15% of your score is a length of history. And then 10% is types of credit. What kind of credit do you have? Remember I said revolving? If you listen close, remember I said revolving installment? That means like you're baking the cake. I got a, like a couple revolving, I got one installment. So now, proportionally, I'm in balance. Okay? And then 10% is how often do you apply for credit? So just, just really remember that. By the time you 21, 22, just make sure you Google credit score models. And that way you can learn how to do what? And this is deep for, for, for young people for your age. You can learn how to do what? Manage your score. Because sometimes people will make a decision based on emotion and what they, what they, this is what I really want to do. But in this world, you've got to base it on how will it impact my score. Well, I'm just going, you know, I can't worry about that. Just, you know, it is what it is. No, that's not a person being smart. They're being emotional. You know, what you do is you make a decision based on how will it impact my score. If I close this account, if I open this account, and you can learn a lot of that stuff. The foundation is in the book, and then by the time you're 21, 22, learn about that model. Let me tell you, you will be on a whole different level. A whole different level. Right? And you wouldn't even be 25, okay? Then we're going to uh, wrap it up. It's like talking about things that make your credit go down. Some of those in the book, we're going to wrap it up. But the one thing I really wanted to, um, really want to say before I wrap it up, can somebody tell me, to the last point, Dave, can somebody tell me the, the top two things you ask when you interview for your first good dream job after college? Top three things. This, this, this is a uh, teachable moment. One of those grandma, granddad, I'll never forget moments. So the top three questions you ask when you for that first, that good dream job, what's the top three questions? See, she said, see, she on point. What's your name? Sure. Sure, that's my girl, you on point. Remember this? I'm going to go ahead and let you all go. That first good job, you always, always, always ask, do you have a 401k and when am I eligible? You don't forget that. Do you have a 401k and when am I eligible? By the time I'm 21, I got me an IRA at my bank. By the time I'm 25, I sat down and talked to a financial planner. I gave you three steps. If you do that, you have the potential to retire as a millionaire. I'm going to say it one more time. You can have the potential to retire as a millionaire. The first good job, do you have a 401k and when am I eligible? Go to your bank, get you an IRA by the time you're 21 at your bank credit union. Before you're 25, sit down and talk to a financial planner and you are set. You got three, that's three steps. And a lot of folks ain't going to follow you. You'll look back one day and say, Mr. Butts, he was right. Okay? 401k, IRA, sit down with a financial planner by the time 25, and you will be on your way. God bless you. Any questions? And make sure you do your surveys. You got your surveys? You're going to give you a survey. I need everyone to complete a survey. That's the only thing I ask. And there's no fee for me to come here and speak because I love midnight golf. The only thing I ask you to do is do what? My Everybody, survey, survey. So, any questions before I stop? Right back here. Listen up. I need a little silence. I have a question. We all want to wrap it up. Go ahead. If your credit report is bad, is it? Over here. Over here. Go ahead. Is it difficult to get it back up? No. No. No, oh, her question was, if you have rough credit, can you get it together? Well, I have to say it depends on how rough it is. So sometimes when it gets rough, it doesn't like snap and get it get it done overnight. But you can rebuild it and reestablish it. Just quiet down a little bit, y'all, because you can't hear me. Because you can't reestablish it. You can't get it back together. Okay? One more question here. Butts, B-U-T-T-S, like the Butts brothers. 
right? All right? Okay, anybody else? Okay, if you not get a book, see me afterwards. Those of you who want to keep in touch, my number is 313-433-1089. I'll say it two more times. My number, 313-433-1089. Mr. Bus. Last call. 313-433-1089. We're good? God bless you. Bless you to your circle.